Greetings. Uh, we have just learned today of the passing at the age of 84 of Father Stan Swami. Father Stan Swami was the oldest accused in the so-called Pima Korigang case. He was also the oldest political prisoner to be held in India. Uh, he was held under the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act. Father Stan Swami is someone who had spent his life working on behalf of the most poor, oppressed, and marginalized peoples all over the world. He was also someone who had been active in the liberation theology movements in the 1970s in the Philippines and in Latin America. Joining us today is noted journalist, activist, and friend of Stan Swami, John Dayal. John Dayal, your thoughts on the passing of Stan Swami? You know, 33 years old man was murdered in Jerusalem 2,000 years ago in judicial custody, you could say, and today, a 84-year-old man has been murdered while in custody, although he died in a hospital. He was denied bail repeatedly. Even at the time of his death, the application of his bail was pending before a magistrate. The charges against him were possibly the flimsiest that could be that he was part of a conspiracy to murder the Prime Minister of India. In that conspiracy, they have raked in not only this 84-year-old sick man, another 82-year-old man, lawyers, journalists, writers. This was to terrorize the nation into silence, to terrorize the dissent. But they cannot terrorize a man like Stan Swami. They cannot hold him in chains. They cannot hold him in jail. Today, death has freed him. But his martyrdom will not be in vain. I speak not as a person of the Catholic faith as he was. And I don't even speak as a social activist on the part of civil society. This is about every Indian and their aspiration for freedom, their aspiration to live in a democratic society and the death in custody of a very, very ill Stan Swami will fuel this nation into ensuring that they regain all that has been lost in the last seven years. What, why are, what is this Bhima Korigam case that he's allegedly involved in? What is that exactly? Who really knows what is this Bhima Korigam case? The name itself is from a place where 200 years ago, an army consisting of the Dalits, the untouchables of this country, beat back a feudal army made up of and led by the upper caste. And every year, the Dalits of the country commemorate this token victory over this hegemony, this caste hatred that has subdued them, subjugated them for 3,000 years under the Hindu caste system. So a few years ago, there was another such celebration of that momentous victory. At that meeting, two members of the RSS, the Hindu fundamentalist group, created some trouble in the mob. And that led to further trouble and so on and so forth. But suffice to say that the police concocted a thesis, a case, that some people belonging to the extreme left met and conceived of a plot to murder the Prime Minister of India. And, and they planted evidence in all sorts of people. And in that case, they arrested a woman lawyer, two men lawyers, a journalist, a writer, an activist, a poet, 82 year old, and Stan Swami, a Catholic priest, a Jesuit, who was working with the tribals of India for 50 years demanding the rights. And they knit them up it was a fake case concocting evidence using all sorts of uh, Memphis 
material. And they arrested all of them. Mm -hmm. And they arrested them in a clutch of laws which makes bail almost impossible. With great difficulty, the poet Barbara Rao, who's on deathbed, you could say, is more ill at that time than Stan Swami. He could get bail to go home to his family for treatment. Stan Swami was denied bail by every possible court of law. Today again was the date for his bail application to turn up. But some days ago, he had been shifted because he was dying, he was gasping for breath. He was shifted to a Catholic hospital so that at least he could get some humanity, some care, some medicines possibly. Day before yesterday, his, his health declined. He went, was gasping and he was put on a ventilator. Today at 1.30, he passed away. The doctors attending on him told the High Court of Bombay that the man that has been denied bail doesn't need it anymore. He's passed their custody. He's dead. Parkinson's disease. Mm -hmm. Couldn't even hold his glass tumbler. Needed a pipe sipper to take water. And he was in jail. He is a martyr. It's very clear that the government uh, has no humanity, has no compassion. The government that did this to him, um, and we'll talk more about that in the days to come. But but I also wanted to mention here that this is someone who uh, has spent his life uh, fighting for the, the, the downtrodden, and not just in India, all over the world. I found in the Philippines, in Brazil, all the liberation theology movements and so on. It's Fifty quite years. A person. Fifty years of a life spent in the service and to act as the voice of the most downtrodden people, the tribals, the Dalits, all over the world, and, and the last few years in India. And these are tribals, you know, government passes laws to take away their rights. They don't have rights over the food, over the forest, over the water, over the land, over what's inside the land. You can give away the land to, to corporates, to crony capitalists at will. And, and he was telling them, and with them, he was telling the government that you can't do it. You can't have your will, you can't take away people, can't take away people's rights, their livelihoods, their lives itself, their human dignity. So true, so true. Thank you so much, John Bayal, for joining us.